In this lecture, I want to talk about constructing a confidence interval, and this is for a population mean when the population standard deviation is zero. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, introduce this with an example, all right, and kind of repeat some of the topics I may have talked about in the previous lecture, but still important to know. So here's the example. Suppose you want to estimate the mean age of the civilian labor force, okay? So it is given that for some reason, okay, that you know that the population standard deviation sigma, okay, whenever we see a Greek letter, right, that tells us it's a population parameter, sigma, the population standard deviation is 12.1 years, but the average is unknown. Okay, so how would you estimate the mean? How would you estimate this average? So you'd collect a sample of data, right? So over here, imagine I did this, all right, so this sample of data is given here. There's 30 individuals. You know, in the in the labor force, I just randomly sampled them and I said, okay, you're working in the labor force. How old are you? And what we see here is the average of these 30 ages of people in the civilian labor force is 41.3 years old. Okay, so, well, the value of X bar here, the sample mean of being 41.3, isn't the actual real population value. Okay, that's probably not the real population mean. It's probably close though, right? But it's there's there's no way that I talked to 30 people and that mean is the same as the real population mean age of the civilian labor force. Okay, this we know is called a point estimate, right? And so a point estimate is just a single value used to estimate the value of a population parameter. So what would you know what could the real mean age of the civilian labor force be? Well, we can't ever really know the real value. Okay, we can't. So we use a confidence interval to find. And just remember, recall that a confidence interval is a range of values used to estimate the value of a population parameter. So um, how do you construct these confidence intervals? What's the formula? Okay, well, a confidence interval we know is a range of values. So a range of values has a lower value we call the lower bound, and an upper value we call the upper bound. And it's all the values in between. So the formula for this we saw in a previous slide, is just, or a previous lecture, excuse me, is the point estimate plus or minus, so we add and subtract what's called the margin of error. Okay, we know what the point estimate is, right? The point estimate is the sample mean. Well, the margin of error in statistics is made up of two things, what being multiplied together, what's called a critical value and what's called the standard error. Well, sample mean is denoted as X bar, add and subtract. I'll come back to this weird looking Z of alpha divided by two, I'll come back to that. And the standard error is just given as sigma, whatever the population standard deviation is, divided by the square root of the sample size. So if you look back, you know, just kind of seeing where this is going to go, I'm going to go back. In our example here, we're given x bar, 41.3. We're given the population standard deviation, which is 12.1. And we're given the sample size is 30. So there's four things in this here, and we're given this, this, and this. This z with the subscripted alpha divided by 2 is called a z-critical value. Now, you can find this by hand, um, uh, either using your graphing calculator or using the standard normal table. But uh, going forward, what I wanted to do is I just wanted to give you a handy little cheat sheet table. So for a level of confidence, if I want to be 90% confident, this z-critical value is 1.645. I want to be 95% confident, the critical value is 1.960, and so on. The most common level of confidences are 90, 95, and 94. And when you're given the level of confidence, as you'll see in these examples, you're just going to plug the critical value right into this. Okay, so keep this. It's x bar, add and subtract your critical value times your standard error. Okay, so in a sample of 30 individuals in the civilian labor force, okay, it was found that the sample mean age was 41.3 years, and let's assume the population standard deviation was 12.1 um, years. So you're given these three things, the sample size, the sample mean, and the population standard deviation. So let's construct and interpret a 95% confidence interval for the mean age of the civilian labor force. So there's two things we have to do here. We have to construct the confidence. Okay, which going back is this range of values, the lower bound to the upper bound. And then we got to interpret. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do both. Okay, so to construct a confidence interval in the class, we'll always use this. OK, 
okay, when population standard deviation is given. Okay, so just plug in all those things. X bar we knew, sigma was 12.1, and sample size was 30. So the Z of alpha divided by two. I want it to be 95% confident. So going back, whenever I want to be 95% confident, the Z critical value is 1.960. So I'm just going to plug all the things right in here. If you were to grab your calculator, I'll do this, uh, 1.960. You're going to have to do the margin of error separately. So 1.960 times 12.1 divided by the square root of 30. I'm just going to round this to one decimal place. It'll be 4.3. So that's the margin of error. So my point estimate, which is 41.3 plus or minus 4.3. So the lower bound is the subtraction part, okay? So 41.3 minus 4.3 gets me 37. And the upper bound is the addition part. So 41.3 plus 4.3 gets me 45.6. Okay, so this is my range of values, okay? They go from 37 to 45.6, okay? So look. I don't know what the real mean age is of the civilian labor force. But based on this sample, we are 95% confident the mean age of the civilian labor force is somewhere between. It could be as low as 37.0 years and as high as 45.6 years. And that's it. The good news also is um, your calculator can do this as well. So and your and the options in your calculator, and I'm going to walk you through this, is you should see this stat button on your graphing calculator. When you press stats, you want to scroll over till you see tests. And you'll I'm going to do this in the TI-84, but your TI-83 calculator looks exactly the same. Okay, so don't stress that I'm only doing this with the TI-84. If you have the TI-83, it looks exactly the same. And you're going to be looking for number seven, which is called Z interval. And I have it in the slides here what it looks like. But let me just show you how to do it. So you're going to press you're going to press this stat button and you're going to scroll over to tests. Okay, and you want number 7, the Z interval. Okay. The first thing you're going to notice it's going to see it say do you want do you have data? Okay, which we don't have data. Okay, that's if you have data plugged in your calculator. You're going to scroll over to stats. You're going to hit enter. What you're going to have to do, you'll notice that I have some values plugged in here already. All right, I'm going to, you're going to have to clear any values out. So I said the population standard deviation was 12.1. You're going to have to put that in. The sample mean, okay, if you look back here, was 41.3. And we had 30 individuals. The C level is your level of confidence. You have to be very careful with this, okay? Notice how it's it's default to 0.95, but if I ask you to for like a 99 or a 90, you just have to change it to whatever the corresponding decimal is. So we're good at 95 here. I'm going to go down to calculate. And you're going to notice you're going to get the same values here, right? When I round this, it was rounds to 37, and when I round this, it rounds to 45.6, which is exactly what I had when we when we did it by hand. So you're more than welcome to do these problems in your calculator. All right, let's do another one. Okay, and I'm going to use the calculator here so you can see how this is done. All right, here's the problem. Calcium is the most abundant mineral in the human body and has several important functions. Okay, most of the body's calcium is stored in the bones and tia, obviously, where it functions to support their structure. Recommendations for calcium are provided in the dietary reference intakes developed by the Institute of Medicine of the National Academy of Sciences. And the recommended adequate intake, the RAI for calcium of adults, okay, ages 19 to 50, is 1,000 milligrams per day. Okay, so that's what they recommend, okay, that you take 1,000 milligrams per day. So a random sample, look right here, of 18 adults, so look what you're given already. given n is equal to 18, all right, with incomes below the poverty level, gave the following calcium intake statement. 
So they recorded their calcium intakes, and this is what they gave me. Note that the sample mean here of this is 947.4. Just note, if I ever give you a problem that doesn't have the sample mean, you can just use whatever methods you know from class or using a calculator to find. And then it also goes on and says, assume the population standard deviation for daily and calcium intake sigma is 188 milligrams. Okay, so look, you're given these three things. Right now I'm going to ask you to find some different confidence intervals. All right, let's construct and interpret a 90% confidence interval for the mean calcium intakes of all adults with incomes below the poverty level. All right, so what you're going to do is you want to use your graphing calculator whenever you can. Make it as easy as you can on yourself. So you're going to hit the stat button. You're going to scroll over to tests, and it's Z interval. All right, so we have the stats. That's great. So what was sigma given here? Let's go back. It was given as 188. X bar here was given as 947.4. And if you look here, we had 18 individuals. So the first example I asked you was a 90% confidence interval. I have to change this to 0 0.90. I'm going to go down to calculate. And look, it gives it to me right there. Okay, it's from 8. 74.5 to 120.3. I'll just round the one decimal place. So to construct it, it was 874.5 is the lower bound to 1020.3. So to interpret this, Based on this sample, we are 90% confident the mean calcium intake of all adults with incomes below the poverty level. is between 874.5 milligrams and 1020.3 milligrams. So look, we don't know what the real population mean is for the calcium intake of adults with incomes below the poverty level. But look, just when I took this sample, I'm saying I'm 90% confident that the real mean is somewhere, it could be as low as 874.5 milligrams could be as high as they're getting 1,020.3 milligrams. Okay, now let's do this one. Let's construct and interpret now in 95%. So I'm going to go back to my calculator. I'm going to hit stat. I'm going to go over to tests, and it's number seven again. All right, this Z interval. So the good news is a lot of this stuff is going to be saved in there. But now I just need to change it to 0 0.95. So now it's going to be 860.6 to 1034.2. So again, construct the lower bound here was 860.6. And the upper bound here was 1034.2. So now we got to interpret it. It's the same interpretation. Okay. It's just we're going to change the last part. Go back to sample. Here we are 95% confident because we increase the level of confidence to 95%. The mean calcium intake. 
of all adults with incomes below poverty level is between, so now look what happened. When we were 90% confident it was this number. Now it's gonna be between 860.6 milligrams and it could be as high as 1034.2 milligrams. So notice what happened. So what happened to the confidence interval as a level of confidence increased? Well, did it get wider or narrower? Well, it went from here to here and here to here. So the interval also got wider. So as you increase the level of confidence, the width of the interval increases. All right, class. So we'll follow up this lecture when we talk next about uh, constructing confidence intervals for population mean when the population standard deviation is not given. Okay, so when you're not given sig, okay, so you're gonna have to use S to estimate it, which is the sample standard deviation. And that'll provide us an introduction into what's called the student's team strategy.